What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. That's how I do my whole life, so. <laughs> well, we're on. Are you sending the link? Uh, are you going to share the link? It's Nathan from Camp Blood uh, wanted to watch. I shared it in my group and on my page. I forgot I to send it to you. Yeah, I didn't see it. Why is it not showing up? I don't know. Let me see. Hold and on. it's on my regular page as well, but I can send it to you right now in a message. Send message. Brian. Boom. Sent. All right, cool. I'm going to forward that to him right now. All right. Oh, uh, well. We are definitely live now, <laughs> but um, we have Marissa on here. How's it going, Marissa? Hi, everyone. <laughs> and South Jersey Jason, you guys know him? Yes. How's it What's going? going on? It is going good despite, you know, the current situation. I'm still trying to live my daily life. That's good. That's good. Same. How about you? Quarantine Same. life. Yes. Quarantine yeah, just, life. um. Chilling in my house watching horror movies, pretty much. That's, hey, that's, that's, doesn't sound like a bad <laughs> thing. You know what's funny about this whole situation, though? Right. How much all of us people complain about how we wish we could just stay home and watch movies. And now that we're like forced to, it's like, fuck, I just want to go out. I want to go to work. I, mm -hmm. go, I mean, I don't want to go to work, but I'm just saying, it's like, I want to go do this, this, and this. Knowing damn well, if it was just a regular Sunday, you'd be fine just sitting in the house doing nothing. Right. Yeah, but I'm always... getting all anxious. <laughs> yeah, I have all these movies to watch, and I'm like, eh, I'd rather be outside. <laughs> it's cold out. <laughs> it was cold today. Let me tell you, um, I was at the lake today doing photos, and I'm usually I'm used to sweating in my costume, and it was cold. Like I didn't sweat at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very cold. So, all right. I'm just going to jump right in. It was cold today. It, it had a light breeze when we went for a little walk earlier. It was breezy. But I will jump into my generic yeah. questions. You already know where I'm going with this, Brian. Mm -hmm. Who or what got you into horror? <laughs> and what's the first movie you remember that scared you as a kid, if any? You want to... Mm -hmm. For Marissa? Well, for both, but yeah. Marissa, Marissa, you can go first since you are the guest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first horror movie I ever watched was it and um <laughs> i remember i uh, i mean i wasn't scared but i was a little like nervous to walk uh, past sewers when i was younger for a while after i watched it and um <laughs> yeah i just remember being like super young i was probably like eight years old and like me and my friends would have sleepovers and when blockbuster was a thing we would mm -hmm. go to blockbuster and rent like a bunch of horror movies and just like stay up all night and watch them and be terrified but it was awesome <laughs> I miss those days. So ever yeah. since, yeah, I've I've been just like a horror movie addict ever since. So, yeah. 
I miss the Blockbuster days too. Uh, Friday nights at Blockbuster or where I was at West Coast Video. So uh, okay. those were the those mm -hmm. were the best uh, Friday nights. Just looking at the horror covers. You know, that's what I did. I would spend like probably a good half an hour looking just at all the horror covers and just like, wow, those are really cool. And then, you know, probably half of them suck, but still the cover art was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the best part was actually going to Blockbuster and like picking out the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one. Yeah, I miss that so much because now, I mean, we have the convenience of just watching it on Netflix or any of these streaming platforms, but at the same time, it's like, we have so many options. You never know what you want to watch. And it gets to the point where, for me, I'll speak for me personally, if I want to watch a movie, I'm flipping through what I want to watch. I get mad. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to put something random on YouTube because I can't figure out what movie I want to watch versus when you go to, for me, it was uh, Blockbuster and then Screen Gems was another place. And I think Hollywood Video. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood when, you, video. Yeah. when you go to one of those places, especially as a kid, your parents aren't going to let you wait six hours to choose a movie. Like, look, come in here. You got this amount of time to choose your movie. Or you're gonna get nothing. So you go there, you right. get, movie, get your candy, get your popcorn, go home, have some pizza, and you watch your horror movies. Maybe play a couple of video games, and that was that was our weekends. <clears throat> play outside all day, watch horror all night, and do yes. it. Yes, <laughs> I miss it. I miss it. I miss those days so much. <laughs> now it's like we have everything at the tip of our fingertips. You know, it's like one click away, but. Yeah. I liked actually going out and like picking out a movie. That was fun. It was. And it made you it made you actually go out there and watch the movie and actually pay attention to it because you only had it for like a day or two and then you gotta return it. We also didn't have cell phones back then, so we didn't have the whole watching the movie and watching your phone throughout the whole day. While texting. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Watching the movie. Yeah. Talking through the whole movie. So what's going on? I have no idea. I don't I don't know how I missed this movie. <laughs> I just missed like a half hour of it. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I love it. I freaking love it. What got, all right, I might as well jump into the cosplay thing. So what got you into the whole cosplay scene? I, as you can see in the background, your awesome Freddy, Freddy cosplay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what got me into it was I was just on Instagram and I discovered the horror community and I was just like, adding a bunch of cosplayers. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so awesome. And then, um, last summer I did a horror photo shoot with, um, my friend Bobby, who is killing machine cosplay. And, um, I was the camp counselor and he was Jason and we did like, took a bunch of pictures and that's pretty much how people started, uh, discovering me and like following me on Instagram. So that pretty much, that pretty much opened the door for me to, cosplaying and then i just i started cosplaying friday i went to my first ever horror convention which was monster mania oh nice and i met so many friends there it, it just felt like home and i met so many amazing people so i'm kind of new at it i just started like last year nice so did freddie come before velma yes okay yeah. so what made you get like that's a totally like big dynamic you have Freddie, <laughs> and then you have Velma Dinkley so what made you do Velma because of the glasses or did you or you're a fan of Scooby-Doo obviously you're a fan of Scooby-Doo I gotta say oh, I love Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo. <laughs> you gotta send me the photos of that Scott I didn't or Scott wrong if you go on my website right. hello you're right <laughs> it's on there <laughs> well th th this is a quick plug what's the website uh, SouthJerseyJason.com and uh, the link is uh, Jason Speaks and you'll see all my blogs and Marissa is the most recent one as her article uh, was released on Friday. Awesome. I will definitely check that out. You tell me this all the time when we record too. I gotta start listening. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so have you ever thought about doing like a Scooby-Doo crossover with Steel City Jason with Elma? Oh yeah. That would yeah. Be, we talked really about cool. um we actually had a really funny idea where um, he would be um, he would be Roy Burns because you know how like everyone thought like it was actually Jason and then like good. it was kind of like a Scooby Doo ending. Yeah. So yes. we were gonna do like a photo shoot like that where he was Roy Burns and I like take off the mask. I'm like, oh shit, it's not Jason. It's that old man Roy Burns. Like, does, <laughs> does he has he cosplayed? <laughs> it'd be funny. I like he cosplayed as Roy or not yet. He doesn't. No. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I mean, he—he's actually not really a fan of Part Five, 
um, because of that, the ending, I guess. Yeah, and um, yeah. but I told him it would be funny if we did it if we did a photo shoot. That, like that's that. a that's a great idea. That's a really good idea. And speaking of photo shoots, we're gonna jump <laughs> jump a little bit. But uh, you and Steele released those Freddy versus Jason photos like around Valentine's weekend, and those mm-hmm. photos were just incredible. Um, now was that like, thank you. You're welcome. Was that shot in an actual like like boiler room or was that uh, green screen? Um, so our photographer, Dom Yu, shout out to Don. He's like incredible. He does some crazy edits. He's an amazing photographer. Um, but we shot that whole photo shoot in his water plant and it was not dark in there. It was like white walls, like bright lights. Somehow he edited those pictures and made everything dark and like added like the fire and the sparks and all that. I don't know how he did it, but yeah, it looked nothing like how it looks in the pictures. <laughs> and that's the beautiful magic of a photographer. You know, they can yeah. take, they can take a simple photo and then just run the gambit with it. And when you guys started releasing that, I was just like, just amazed at just how great they looked. I was like, damn, this is better than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we spent our Valentine's Day weekend. <laughs> and, you know, that's a great horror couple right there. You know, kudos to you yeah. and him. So, <laughs> we um, had a great time. Do you, is this a photographer your first time using him, or have you used him before? Um, so Scott has used him before. It was my first time, and it was very overwhelming because he's super professional, has all this, like, fancy equipment. It was, mm-hmm. like, telling me how to po- – I felt like I was on a movie set. It was crazy, but – um, yeah. Once I got comfortable, it was it was a lot of fun, and it was like the first time like me actually being a killer in the photo. Shoot. Usually, I'm like the victim. I'm always the one getting killed. So it was just nice. Like that little change up was nice. Did you do anything to get in the like the mood? Like for me, I'll listen to like the soundtrack as I'm getting dressed. Um, did you watch a movie or anything before the photo shoot? We watched Freddy vs. Jason the night before, and then on the drive there, we actually blasted the Nightmare on Elm Street soundtrack. Nice. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Nice. So, tell, like, so your Freddy is just a little bit different. It's more like, I call it like a femme fatale, because you chose to mm-hmm. do like a, a vixen type, which is really cool. And I love, I love... Sexy the, Freddy. The, the sexy <laughs> Freddy. I love like the, the, the one image um, <laughs> where it's the basically the the replication of the the remake poster where it's like this. Yeah. You know, that's really cool. Um, What made you not want to do like actual like burn makeup? Mm, Well, (laughs) I can't do makeup for shit. So (laughs) that's uh, that's one of the reasons. Okay. Well, there you go. (laughs) But (laughs) yeah, I'm not like an FX uh, makeup artist. I wish I was because I like all those people that, do that kind of makeup they're phenomenal but i kind of like work with what i can do and i draw like some cuts on my face and luckily uh, the photographer he didn't really get much of my face he kind of like it, there was a there were a lot of shadows in the, mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. photo shoot so you really couldn't see my face anyway now when you cosplay do you have contacts on or are you blind like me <laughs> i'm blind yeah Oh my god, I had to take my glasses off for that photo shoot and I could not see a thing. Like the photographer was telling me how to pose, like from a far away distance, and I could not see what he was doing. He was like, pose like this. And I was like squinting. I was like, what are you doing? I can't see. <laughs> yeah. I'm like actually Velma in real life. I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> I'm like M- Millhouse in real life. That was actually my nickname in high school. You know, it was a fun nickname. <laughs> You take my glasses off and I, I can't see at all. These are like binoculars, you know? Um, but when I'm in costume... Oh my God, the, my lens are so thick. They like poke out from the side of my frames. Well, thankfully, I got the real thin lens, you know? If not, they'd be out to here. Um, but when I'm, in yeah. cost- when I'm in costume, like, it's... Like, I had to just, like, when I got the hood for, like, my part seven, um, it had, like, the eyes in it, but I just trim them out um, because they put the, like the little slits in there. And um, even if you had 20, 20 vision, I don't know how you can see through them. So I just cut the little right. eyes out. And then, you know, when you put the hawk on that also can, you know, block your vision. So I am like a stumbling Jason. That sucks so I, I bad. I use my machete as a walking oh stick. Oh my God. <laughs> 
yeah. kind of just like feel around. Like, I'm like, guys. I'm like bumping into people. <laughs> I'm, tri- I'm like, I'm like, as if Jason oh. just got out of the bar, you know, and looking for the after hours. That's, that's um, hilarious. That's like, hilarious. Yeah, just like, especially like you know, like again, Monster- I haven't cosplayed at Monster Mania. This, mm, this past Monster Mania would have been my first time cosplaying there. And it's already crowded mm-hmm. as it is, oh, yeah. you know? So I can only imagine me just bumping into people. Um, I like NJ Horicon. Marissa, if you ever get the opportunity to go to that one down in Atlantic City, it's at the show boat, very spacious. So you don't have to worry about, you know, bumping in or, or whatnot. And uh, yeah, we were all bummed about Monster Mania. I don't know why they have it at that small little hotel lobby it's just i i don't they have it somewhere else i i do know why and um you know i'm still at cherry hill the cherry hill cherry hill and if i had to guess it's probably because of the uh, you know the many people that come they get the hotel room i'm sure the hagans get a sweet deal on booking it so, um, I was actually at the convention when they, the fire marshals had to come and shut it down. Ooh. That was the last Monster mm. Mania I've been to since they started the new wristband. And this is why they started the PopCon, because Monster Mania, I love them to death. You know, I love anyone who is a, you know, a... um like a small business, you know, doing this for the fans. It started out as a small family con. But then as, you know, time went on, it got popular. And then he started bringing in the bigger names, okay? That mm-hmm. he didn't have anything to do with horror, like Chiller does, for example. Mm-hmm. But, Chiller, but Chiller has the capacity of a place to hold, you know, thousands of people. So the weekend I went, it was Elvira, Pee Wee Herman, um what's his face from jaws um i can't think of his name right now it's like drawing a blank but he played uh hooper um so Mm -hmm. when you have all those people uh, and your horror people you're going to get people from pop culture in general so i mean it was ridiculous and you know, it was so crowded. I just wanted to see. I saw Paul Rubens, but I couldn't see Elvira because it was just so packed, and they were in a small ballroom. So probably yeah. like around three or four o'clock, we left, and um, the fire trucks are coming, the the police cars are coming. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> and then I found out they locked the doors. Wow. Kane Hunter went out for fresher breath there, and he got locked outside. He couldn't get back into the hotel. <laughs> That oh was also God. the same weekend <laughs> that I believe he cut someone with a machete that Friday night because uh, some numb nuts decided to bring in a real machete oh, and God. have Kane sign it. He told Kane it was what? dull. Well, Kane went and whacked the guy next to him. Blood everywhere. So, I mean, he didn't like... I didn't off. hear about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. crazy. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I like Monster Mania because uh, if you I like cons in general because you just meet so many great people, guests, and and the patrons. You know, my wife loves going to take selfies because she's really good at when the the um, actors walking by, she'll get a selfie with them. You know, when mm-hmm, I go to a convention, yeah. I I clam up. You know, I'm like I'm like a little schoolgirl. You know, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, she, you know, she mm-hmm. loves the ven- she loves the vendor areas. That's her favorite part is seeing all the vendors. And yeah. she's the social butterfly where she can talk to anyone. You know, I mean, I, c- I can talk to the patrons, but when it comes to the actors, I, mean, I, have all the- I have all this stuff in my mind that I want to tell them, but then I clam up. Oh, see, I'm the complete opposite of that. I'm what, especially when I go back and forth with them. Like I was, um, not this past October, the October before, Ken Sagos. I met him. Freaking awesome. One of the nicest actors I ever met. And like me and him were joking around the whole weekend to the point he'd be like, "Aaron, hey, come around, come around here and hang out with me back behind my table." And we'd be going back and forth, jok- joking around and stuff. People come up to get autographs. We're still going back and forth. People are just cracking up. I I love it. And it's yeah. just the the one thing that's helped me kind of get out of my shell with like places like going to the conventions is the cosplaying because um, you know it's like. My day job, I'm like an administrator at a nonprofit 
and then you know at five o'clock i can mm -hmm. be myself and you know i put on the costume and i always remember what gary Busey said when they interviewed him for buddy holly story he was like i put on the glasses and i felt like buddy holly so that's like how I feel mm -hmm. like when I put on the hood and the hockey mask, I can be my favorite horror <laughs> character for however many hours. That's cool. And, you know. He gave us confidence, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, going to the, more and more of these events at Blairstown, interacting with the fans, becoming part of the Blairstown Museum. Shout out to the Blairstown Museum. Um, that's helped a lot. So, like, when we went to Jason Fest at Blairstown, and, you know, Jeanette, it, who is the curator, is, you know, tell me where I'm going to sit. She's like, oh, you're going to sit next to Vince DeSani. I was like, holy crap, Vince DeSani. I just watched, you know, Never Hike Alone, like, the night before, just to, you know, rewatch it. Mm -hmm. And he's just such an easy guy to talk to. You know, we talked off and on mm -hmm. the whole night. And, you know, he's, I was picking his brain about how he came up with the concept of Never Hike Alone. And, um, you know, since then, we've we've form this friendship and I talk to him, you know, through emails every so often, if he can help um, shoot a little video for something I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I've met so many great people as a cosplayer, as I'm sure Marissa can attest as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm the same way. I'm really shy when it comes to like going to conventions and like talking to people. I'm like super shy, but uh, I don't know when you like put on that costume and like people like come up to you and they ask for pictures and they talk to you, you get, you start getting more comfortable. Now, did you, did you know Bobby before you became his victim? Were you friends before that? Um, we had met on Instagram and we talked for a little bit. Um, and then we met in person at monster mania and then we had the photo shoot in June. Yes. So monster mania was in March. Yeah, March. Okay. Yeah, of he does last a year. really good Jason, and he does Michael Myers too, right? He does. Yeah, he yeah. Does, I think he does H six. Yes, and he yeah. also he did uh, Terminator, I think, for the first time last year. So mm -hmm, I saw yeah. that he looked awesome. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's one guy like we're we you know we we like each other's stuff on Instagram um, and Facebook, uh, but I haven't met him in person. I'm looking forward to it. You know, oh, he's the sweetest guy ever. He's like a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how they that's usually how they are. You know, like the Gallo guys. Um, yeah. Let me tell you, that's a bunch of motley crew, but I love them dearly. Um, <laughs> Joe, Joe Gallo was the first that, you know, kind of took me under his wing when um, he he had shared a message on his Facebook page about going to Blairstown. And I had said, hey, I'm going. And then that's how we formed our friendship. Now we're like BFS. We talk every day. He's the, literally the first person that took me under his wing. And, you know, to this day gives me advice or even he will ask me what I think of his ideas. And then that's awesome. Now we're on a uh, Facebook message group. So I have Joe and his other Jason. So we have Jordan Harvey, who does an amazing reboot Jason. Like, he, yeah. loves, he loves the remake movie. And his, his re remake Jason, reboot Jason, whatever you call it, is just awesome. I agree. I did see pictures of that earlier he posted. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, that he was does that. And, you know, he, he does, like, Spider-Man. And um, he's actually going to debut, uh, what is it, Harry from um harry warden yeah. harry warden from my bloody valentine he was so amped up to wear that at monster mania it looked really good um and then we have james burlew who does um jason x which he does pre-uber which looks really good and um we actually met through social media back in the summertime and then shortly after that like joe gallo found out that they're only like 40 minutes from each other and they did an amazing jason x photo shoot together jason x not my favorite movie <laughs> i'll take manhattan over that any day yeah um yeah. <laughs> and then um, i think the look is cool but the, the, I, I like the pre-uber i don't like the uber um you like the uber look? Really? <laughs> i i don't like the uber a, look. i think it's a it's not my favorite i mean seven's my favorite look hands down it's a fun look yes like, seven. Look. but um i got a question for both of you would either of you ever do a cosplay of another horror icon besides well you with jason you with freddie you can go marissa hmm. um i always wanted to do uh samara from the ring 
you, yeah, you got the hair for it, definitely. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do the walk that she does, like that crazy, like on her knees, like that. Well, I, yeah, they. I tried and I almost like broke my back. I was like, I can't do. Yeah, this. they used a contortionist for that, but all you really need is just to stand there, you know. <laughs> and yeah, but I want to do the walk. That makes it more. That makes it more creepy. Like how uh, awesome would it be if you saw me at Monster Mania crawling on the floor like that? Yeah, that that those when you watch <laughs> horror movies and they put that in there, like that creeps me out. Like when The <laughs> Exorcist, they release The Exorcist like with the scenes you never seen like maybe twenty years ago or something, mm -hmm. and they put the spider walk in there for the first time. That creeped me out because that is the one horror movie to this day that scares the crap out of me and if you've never read the book read the book because it's scarier than the damn movie oh i gotta um, read the book now yeah i remember reading it probably like when mm -hmm. i was 17 or 18 and I, I had to sleep with the lights on because that's how scary it was that's awesome um, because because possession to me is more scarier than michael myers or, or oh yeah jason um but as far as me cosplaying um before I got into cosplay, I actually, like for Halloween, like I love Halloween as well. A lot of cosplayers love Halloween, but mm -hmm. I love when the kids come to the house and I would, I started really dressing up as like Michael Myers. So like, um, is next to, uh, Friday, Halloween's my next favorite franchise. So I would just do Michael mm -hmm. Myers and what I would, <laughs> what I would do. And I still do to this day. If I'm, if it's, if it's, I'm home on Halloween is I get in costume and I go to the corner of my street and then just stare at the cars as they walk by, you know, or drive by, um, and they honk at me or whatever. Um, and then you know, <laughs> sometime one time I had, I bought a, um, I bought a mold from the 2018, movie and i mean it looks really real from afar um and like i said i can't see so <laughs> so a cop car <laughs> drive drives by i was like whoops you know um but um <laughs> as far as any other franchises like the the other only other thing i i have but i haven't worn yet is um i have um the punisher vest so okay. um i was always thinking like you know for like uh if i go to a, like a comic book convention or something dressing up as the punisher okay yeah mm. that's, a, that's a simple simple yeah costume. yeah now, yeah Mark, that's awesome as, as i'm talking about the exorcist mm -hmm. i don't know if you heard the thing fall but i have uh, uh <laughs> jason tiny tunes that's hanging on my wall right it's been up there probably six months now and it literally just fell uh oh so. <laughs> if more stuff starts falling i'm hanging up on you <laughs> i don't want that the over power of christ compels me so <laughs> you pissed off the demons <laughs> uh, i did yes i pissed them off the spirits it. yes <laughs> that's that's weird the hook the hook holding it fell off too out of the wall mm -hmm. you be mm -hmm. careful yes <laughs> so <laughs> so Marissa, is um is Freddy your favorite slasher? Or No. Michael Myers is. Okay. Not a bad Yes. Job. I love him. But yeah, Halloween's my favorite franchise too. So But I would say um probably Michael, Jason, and Freddy, like top top three, definitely. Michael, Jason. Yeah. Okay. So have you ever thought about doing like a Lady Voorhees type cosplay? Mm, that would be interesting. It would be. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I'm down to try it. I mean, <laughs> a lady Michael, you might as well throw that one in there too. That's her favorite. Halloween. Yeah, I just don't know how you can you can really def like get away with doing a lady Michael. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, some girls like hold the mask and like wear like Yeah. I don't know. I'm just really not into like the female Michael. Like some people can make it work. I actually I follow a girl who does a really good female Myers. Um, no, but what's on Instagram, yeah, her what's name's her? Female Myers. <laughs> That's oh, okay. Because I, 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 I saw one, but that was okay. I have to check her out. All right. Yeah, she's awesome, and she does like a female version and a male version. Like, she's, okay, nice. She's good. Yeah. So, what's your okay? So, what's the first Halloween movie you saw? You remember seeing Halloween, Halloween four, Halloween four and five. Okay, okay. And they're actually like two of my favorites. Like everyone hates them. 
but I just don't understand the hate that they get because I personally love, I love the Curse of Thorn um, timeline. I thought yeah, it was, it, like was, I, it was a little bizarre. It got bizarre, like towards uh, Halloween Six, but I kind of liked it because it was so bizarre. I was like, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, Halloween Six was actually the first one I saw in the theaters, and this is man, I was a sophomore in high school. I'm like really dating myself now, um, <laughs> but, but I actually got into like a heated debate with Joe Gallo because I like Part Six. But he yeah. was. But we got into an argument because he's saying that Rob Zombie's Part Two was better, and I was like, "Oh no, oh not at no, all." No, that's a negative. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, that was yeah, like no. <laughs> one of the worst ones. Part, you know, it's funny. Part Six is actually my younger cousin. It's his favorite one of the franchise, but he likes like the whole. I forgot how he said it. He used some big words. He likes the whole. What was it astrology? <laughs> he likes the whole just astrology, astrology. behind it. Yeah, yeah, and just. Some other stuff. He just loved the whole thing about it, but that's his. That's his. Halloween's his favorite franchise, and Part Six is his favorite one. Like, if they all. could go back and like rewrite history, definitely forget yeah. about Rob Zombie Two and mm-hmm. Halloween Resurrection. Yes, I agree with you on both of those. Every other one I enjoyed, except for those two, and those two are like the ones I watched yeah. the least by far. I think I've only seen Resurrection maybe once or twice. That's once or twice too many. I've probably seen Resurrection like once. <laughs> yeah. And then Rob Zombie's remake, same thing. The second one, not the first one. The first one I enjoyed, like maybe like once or twice, because I own the Blu- Blu-ray box set. So you know, let me go. Yeah. Through these. And then you you go you know you you go through movies again, and there's certain movies you watch, and you're just like, what the fuck? I forgot how bad this was. Yeah. yeah that was. That was I mean, yeah. Uh, but at that time, I you actually know, really enjoyed uh, Rob Zombie's um, the first Halloween. I oh, really first- enjoyed it. The first one I thought was amazing. I, I loved yeah. the first one, but part two, I just don't know. What, I had no idea what was going on. If they kept, it, if they kept part two with, with like similar to the storyline of the original part two, it would have been so much better. I mean, we got we got um, punked with like the first, what, 10, 15 minutes where it was like the dream sequence. And I didn't like the way they portrayed Laurie Strode. You know, she went from the goody-goody to like this... I mean, yeah, she's got PTSD, but that's just not the Laurie Strode character. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And also, they turned Michael into like a mama's boy. I'm like, um, he's not Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the whole I thing that his mom was weird. Yeah, and you know, um, the whole the 90% the whole... of the movie, he didn't have his mask on. So, um, yeah. but, but I did meet Tyler Maine. Yeah, Tyler Maine. Um, cool guy uh you know and he i think i met him at the second maybe the f- the first horror kind of went to because it was the same time i met daniel harris and she's like my hall pass my celebrity hall pass wait a minute yeah. you, gotta, <laughs> you, you can't do stuff like that and kind of skip over you gotta go deeper into that that hall pass thing as far as what why I, she's my celebrity crush or no, well, I, that, I know why she's your celebrity crush the hall pass yeah I well, every to... every couple is allowed to have a celebrity hall pass you know so um, yes I I, for, <laughs> I, think, I think I forget who my wife would be probably Jason Momoa at the moment I don't know if she's moved on to anyone he's else. such a terrible actor yeah, he but you. you just have to put mute, if you just put mute on. That's all the women <laughs> want, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, okay. I'm glad you said that's what the women want because I just said he's a bad actor. They say just put mute. That's not gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not for me. You know, but um, it's funny that Super Bowl commercial he was in. That, that was, was hilarious. Says, that was great. I love that. Um, and if you want to see something funny, if you haven't done so already, Google like Jason Momoa Baywatch Hawaii. And that's when he first started. So he looks totally different, but my wife, first, mm. my wife first saw him as Cal Drago. So she got to see him at his worst, I guess, because he looked really, he didn't look, I don't know, hot or whatever, you know, I guess he was like a butterface, but, um, you know, anything she, <laughs> he's in, she'll watch. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my celebrity, uh, Hall passes Daniel Harris because I mean the girl's like 40. Daniel Harris is so cute. <laughs> She's like forty two, I think. She's a couple years older than me, but she looks great. She still looks me. the same. She has she like does. that baby face. She does. she does. 
And that's I still I, see her as like eight years old. <laughs> like, oh my god, you're still like Jamie Lloyd. And that's <laughs> how I first, you know, uh, came to know her. You know, when the Halloweens came out, you know, I was right around her age and renting them at the video store. Mm-hmm. And then she was in the Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans classic, The Last Boy Scout. She played Bruce Willis's daughter. And then, of course, the mm-hmm. cult classic, Don't Tell Mom That Babysitter's Dead. Um, and then she was on Roseanne for like a season. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't know what she was in. What was Roseanne? <clears throat> no, yeah, Roseanne. Yeah, she she didn't have, she had like a, just like a couple, maybe a handful of episodes. She played the next door okay. neighbor. Okay. And was like a bad influence on Darlene. Not that she <clears throat> I've probably seen it and just don't remember that, but all right. Yeah. She wasn't like a main fixture ever. No, 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 not at all. But no, uh, Halloween, she was in four and five, right? Correct, and she was supposed to be in six, but um, you them. know when they, you, they did her dirty. Yeah, well, plus when you get the they agents, did her so dirty. when you when that's the problem with agents too, because agents kind of, in my opinion, ruin things for the actors as well, because sometimes they speak on the actor's behalf, and you know, want more money, and you know, but uh, it was cool to see her in uh, Zombies Halloween. You know, thir- she had the nine hundred two one. Yeah, that was awesome. The yeah. 90210 syndrome, a 30, well, 35 year old playing a 17 year old. So, <laughs> it happens. She's 35 in that movie? She pulled it off, though. She, I she think so. looks young. Can, so it works. I can look it up right now for you. Wow. But four and five, she looks so young. Four and five, you're right, though, about those two. Those, they, were, they were good. I don't understand the flack and the hate for them either. The, I love opening, four and five. the opening of part four, where it's just like. The, the eerie silence with the music and the cornfield or the farmhouse mm-hmm. like that yeah. that was just great to me and i like part five like i think we actually did we have this was it also had this discussion sir about uh going from four to five yeah we did with the the mass difference and everything yeah yep. we did the friday um, actually friday yeah i don't know i kind of liked well, Don Shanks was uh, Michael in part five, and, you know, he just turned 70, and he looks great. He's like another guy like CJ just turned 60, and they both look good, and they can both play yeah. their respective roles if they were asked to again. Mm-hmm. I, 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 The only part I didn't like in uh, part five was, like, when she's in the coffin, and uh, what was it? She says, like, don't, like, Uncle Boogeyman or something like that. And he start, yeah, and he starts crying. <laughs> yeah. He takes yeah. his mask off, right? Was- yeah. And she's like, you're just like me. Um, but I just <laughs> yeah, think that part kind of threw me off. The, the supporting cast was kind of weak. Like Tina, for whatever reason, gets like, just like the fans hate the character of Tina. Um, I actually love Tina. Unpopular opinion. Yeah, <laughs> Again, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I liked her, but there just wasn't, I don't, I don't know. You just didn't have really a, uh, a, uh, I liked Rachel different. more. They did Rachel dirty. Oh, yeah, they did definitely. My girl Rachel dirty. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel was great. She was a great uh, <laughs> final girl. But she was so stupid in H5. Like, she was, she just, like, was super ditzy, and, like, she died. Like, she, like, allowed herself to get killed so easily, and she was, like, super smart and slick in part four, and then, like, five. I don't know what happened. They, like, fucked up her character really bad. Changed everything up. <clears throat> yeah. So let's see. All right. So Daniel Harris was born June 1st, 1977. So let's see. When did Halloween come out? Let me see real quick. That was four and five? No, like, no, the remake of Rob Zombie. So I'm seeing when that came out. Um, I'm going to say 2000. 2007? Okay. She was 30. All right. So she was 30. I was five years off. So, but still. But still 30 years old playing a 17. yeah, right. she she literally looks seventeen. Yeah, yeah. she looks wow. like a teenager. So yeah, she's, so she'll be yeah, so she's three years older than me, and she looks, you know, she can graduate high school. <laughs> so I hope you know I have those genes. You know, like when I shave, I have a baby face. So uh, <laughs> wait, you actually look young too. I didn't know you were you were. I'm You're 40. at that age. Yeah, I'm four. Uh, that, that age. She didn't want to. She didn't want to carry uh, that, put me in that bracket. Oh, I thought. No, I didn't want to. I don't want to be rude. No, nah, that's cool. Oh, I'm, I'm 40. A, I'm, I'm the complete opposite because I mess with him all the time, tell him how he's old. <laughs> I just throw out a random number, like 60, ah. 75. <laughs> He'll just go with it. Life. It's getting to the point now where I've been referenced as, oh, man, you're older than my dad. You know, because I was at a um, I was at a family <laughs> um baby shower. 
back uh, like uh, the start of the football season, maybe. And so I'm sitting at a, a table and I'm talking to like the extended family and the, the girl's probably like, I don't know, 10 or 11. And, you know, she's getting to know me, asked me questions. And she asked me how old I was. And I said, oh, I'm 39. And she's like, oh, you're two years older than my dad. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> You know, oh, that's what, that's what ouch. hurts. I don't turn in, turn in, turn in 40 was a little hard for me because I was just like, darn 10 more years. I'm 50, you know, like that's what I'm thinking in the back of my head, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, you know, but Hey, I embrace it. And, you know, doing like the cosplay, I keeps me young, I guess you can say. So you gotta be young at heart, man. Have some fun with it. Are either one of you guys gamers at all? You want to answer? I'm not, (laughs) because I'm lame. (laughs) Uh, I can't. I don't. You know what? I since I got into the cosplay, like, well, not since. I would say since, gosh, the past couple months, I've been so just swamped with will work, and then this whole cosplay my thing taken off. Mm -hmm. I haven't gamed as much, but I never played online gaming until the Friday the Thirteenth game came out. And I was a backer, so mm-hmm. I got, I got, um, you know, it was released earlier than, you know, the others if you were a backer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it came out that night, of course, there was like a shit ton of glitches. But it was fun playing with the people, you know? Like, I got to p- talk to people all over the country. Yeah. Um, when the Predator game comes out, I know, like, Nathan Barker, who hosts Camp Plug Radio, he's getting that. He has a PlayStation, so I'll probably get that because it's from the makers of the Friday the 13th. Oh, nice. Um, but Joe Gallo has an Xbox, so I keep making fun of him for that, you know? You know everybody, can't be, everybody can't be right, man. <laughs> That's right. You got to get um, your PSN, though, because I play I'm, – I'm, I, I say I'm a gamer, but I'm not good. I just like to get on, have fun, and stream. But uh, we're gonna be, actually yeah. tonight. We're gonna be playing Friday the Thirteenth. I don't know how late you stay up. I know. Oh, uh, I I got work in the morning, so I can't stay up late. Okay. Um, okay. but like the best time for me to play would be like Fridays and Saturdays. You know, that, for online. That's usually how I do it. But again, I'm off, so I just play late. Yeah. Like but I yeah. haven't I haven't played Friday since probably the kids started playing it, and I heard like they ruined it. You know, like I remember one guy was saying, "I'm killing this." kid playing as a counselor and he started crying like don't kill me it's like i'm jason what am i supposed to do kill him. um <laughs> but yeah i don't really play online gaming but i do game like um actually i was i wanted to play um i think it's called day's end i forget it is, fits with uh to what's going on today it's like a zombie game you're like yeah. a, a motorcycle <clears throat> what's going on today <laughs> yeah um but i'm i'm amped for um the last of us too um which should be coming out in may and that was a fun game when that came out and i uh i um i think i told you the story uh aaron um i know a girl that cosplays as the character uh oh, from nice. the game, and her dad actually she got her dad in the cosplay and so he plays joel that's all and they did a really cool photo shoot and naughty dog the maker they, they tagged Naughty Dog, and Naughty Dog reposted it on Instagram. So I met her through cosplaying at the um, comic book store that, you know, had hosted me a couple of times. And she does other characters, too. She does mostly, like, uh, like uh, comic book characters and, mm-hmm. and um, Link from Zelda. And I asked her, hey, would you want to do a cosplay crossover? And it's, like, your characters from The Last of Us and... Just stumble upon Crystal Lake. Nice. You know? So right. yeah, she said mm. definitely. So I want to do that like closer to when the game gets released. That's and fun. you know, I think that would be a fun um photo shoot. And plus I had told you she's got a twin sister. So Yeah, I, you're talking about this Friday. Yeah, yeah. I, I would want her I want to do like a Friday thirteenth part four mm. and just see if they can get some gaudy white pants and the pink and blue stripe button up shirt oh my god that would be genius yeah <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. awesome yeah the twins so, yeah so you um your, um some of your playstation name when you get a chance yeah i'll have to log on because i've been so long i forget what it is <laughs> so marissa um do you have like uh like uh any other characters that you would want to try not in the horror like world hmm let me see. <laughs> um, 
Oh, I always wanted to do uh, Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I know that's oh. random, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, I don't know. She's really like. I really want to try cosplaying her. I would have to get a red wig. I don't know how I how now I would, would pull you that off. now would you wear <laughs> that at a convention or if there was a like like I could see that's a little to me like. Whenever, well, here's the thing: the problem with female cosplayers, uh -oh. you're going to get eyes always on you, and especially if you're Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. So I know, um, what is it called? Um, the Pop Rock and Horror Convention. They actually did a New Year's small horror convention. Um, they do a convention in Gettysburg, and they're fairly mm -hmm. new. And they did a New Year's Eve mini horror convention slash dinner type thing mm -hmm. now, i can see you doing mm -hmm. it like that you know like yeah yeah would you want it would you do that actually like monster mania though mm, i don't know i don't think i would fit in <laughs> it would be kind of weird like or, <laughs> would or i be you, allowed to <laughs> I don't know. oh yeah more more maybe more of like a yeah. con type yeah like they're doing the pop con now if you ever go to one of the pop cons you know, um, yeah. well, speaking of like mm -hmm. just, you know, cosplay and horror couples, how did you and Steel get together? Was it through Instagram where you first like saw each other's work or did you meet him at a convention? I met him through Instagram. Um, okay. He were actually long distance. He lives in Pittsburgh. I live in Philadelphia. Okay. So, um, I like travel to him and like he travels to me and um, but we originally met on Instagram. I added him and then he I'm, I'm a big fan of I was a big fan of his uh, Jason costumes. He does like eight different Jason. No, I think like seven different Jason looks. He does a lot and his costumes are phenomenal. And that's how I found them. I liked all his pictures and you know you know how it goes yeah yeah slid in the dms <laughs> <laughs> slid in the dms now um but yeah he does like a really cool hopper from um uh stranger things yeah he also does jim hopper from stranger oh, things he cool. looks just like him he does and he's he's in my well he's older than me correct he's probably in the mid 40s he's 47 47 that's that's right there i want to be yeah. that age and still be young at heart like that like that's really cool but he's like he does not act 47 he acts like he's in his 20s that's good though like he's so he's just so fun and he's like a big teddy bear and he's just that's an good. awesome person that's good yeah so um when you got into cosplaying like um like now I never check to see like how many followers you have. Do you have like do you have like um like a nice little fan base? Um yeah. Uh, it, recently, my following list. Well, I mean, I don't really pay attention to that stuff, but I did notice like my following like went up, and I was like, I remember when I started at like five hundred followers, and then ever since I started like really ever since I did the photo shoot with Bobby, like people started adding me. That's and awesome. I was like, oh, holy shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's so, I mean, and that's what I, I have like to thank to... Bobby and Lisa. They are, they are awesome. Oh, like they, awesome. Okay. yeah. There you go. Um, um, and that's what it's all about in the cosplay world is the networking. I like to use that word networking. Um, cause mm -hmm. that was one of the, cause that's what I do for my nine to five, uh, with what I do for the nonprofit, you network with other agencies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And when I first got mm -hmm. into this and I've told, uh, sir, this story and everything, like I just did it on a whim. Uh, friends of mine asked me to be, to be a judge in a costume contest and they knew I liked Friday the 13th. And at the time I, you know, I just had a goodwill <coughs> mind costume you know and it was wasn't until i started going to blairstown more that i met the curator of the museum i started sharing her stuff and you know she promoted me for like my first appearance to back in jason mm -hmm. fest and then uh sir he we met each other i think on um maybe that his name was jason page or something like you had commented and I responded and then you, you got into my DMs 
Hey, so, wait, wait, hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Slid in the DMs. You can't say that. You cannot. I ne- <laughs> I didn't slide in the DMs. I networked into the DM. There's a difference. <laughs> we don't want to. Again, we're not against any of that stuff. We don't want to put that narrative out there either. <laughs> and I just saw uh, spit beer all over my computer. So, um, oh, man, that was so funny though. But um, yeah, so you know, being on um, this podcast helped me, and then. Um, Shortly after Blairstown, now I had talked to Nathan Barker previously before I was on a show. Just uh, I reached out to him about networking. You know, he was giving mm-hmm. me advice, which he still continues to do so. And he had me on his show, and that definitely helped. And you know, I I never listened to podcasts until I really got into uh, cosplaying and it's hard to find a good podcast because if you don't have my attention in five minutes, I'm going to turn you off. Mm-hmm. So there's three podcasts yeah. that I really listen to. And like with Nathan's podcast, Camp Luck Radio, it's, it's strictly Friday the 13th. Every once in a while, they might just do like a round table discussion talking about um, maybe just horror related or excuse me, just, you know, shooting a shit, you know? Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. so, I started, you know, sharing his stuff more and then he started plugging me and then I started doing funny memes and whatnot. So we've, you know, we have this really <laughs> good relationship. Like he's a good guy. He's good. He's a good person. I can call my friend. I'm hoping like one day we can meet each other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, last week he had texted me and, uh, you know, was asking me if I'd be interested in being on a show. I was like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, when he's like tonight, I was like, oh shit, you know. So <laughs> I stopped what I was doing, and <laughs> that's you know, awesome. Joe and I uh, got on, and um, you know, because of like networking with Camp Blood Radio, I now have T-shirts on Slasher Dot Graphics. Nice. So um, you know, I have my website, and the whole reason I started the Confessions of a Cosplayer is I wanted to like give back in a way any way I can and the best way I knew know how right now is to put the spotlight on other cosplayers because the spotlight was given on me so um I appreciate you doing that oh the way like I don't know I feel how I feel honored that you included me in that like oh you're very welcome um because I you know when I first saw you was like I said in Bobby's photos and um you know I got wanted to get back to work in my website so of course the first person i spotlight was joe gallo because he's like my mentor Mm. and um you know i have enough articles going on to bring me into june so which is good Mm. because you know it's not like i'm like i don't have to worry so much about reaching out to people because they're they're coming to me um but i'm hoping more people do because the first couple weeks i was getting emails like every day and now i get like maybe once a week (coughs) once every two weeks but um you know basically what i do is i prep the following week like on like like today i worked on an article this morning so i was already ready to be self-published on um friday and um what i also i'm also looking for more female cosplayers so if anyone is listening uh marissa was the second female cosplayer i have one more cosplayer um she's going to be on in uh, I want to say end of April or, or May. And she's not like a, she's a various horror franchise. She does like universal monsters. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So that'd be cool. She was actually going to be at my, you don't see that too often. No. And she actually just showed her invisible man costume. She was going to uh, wear at monster mania. It looked really cool. Like the classic H or the classic universal one in the forties. And branching off what you were saying, uh, you know, you made the Confessions of a Cosplayer thing on your website. Now, me and you were discussing, what, just a few days ago, maybe even back, maybe longer than that, but I know recently, a few days ago, and I was like, I want to start getting more cosplayers on here to help get their name out there more, and just, I love the networking thing, as you do, too. It helped, and it helps us all out, like, all of our followers or fans or whatever you want to call them. They're going to check out, say, for example, they're going to check out this episode to hear what Marissa had to say and what you had to say. 
and that make them that's gonna make them listen to more episodes, but it's also gonna mm-hmm. make people who listen to this on a regular basis check out your guys' work, which is amazing work that I feel like everybody should check out and I love it. That's one thing I love yeah. about this horror community too, is we all like help each other out. Help each other. Yeah. Community. Everyone's so nice. I I it's, love the horror community so it, much. It, it, it seems so funny. I mean, us as fans, like passionate fans about horror, we know how people are in the community when you go to these cons and everything. And you don't expect it. Like say somebody outside of the horror, they're like, you guys listen to watch all these crazy ass movies, all these violent movies. You got how are these? Yeah, but I'm like, we're the <laughs> people in the world, though. You go to these cons, everybody's having a great time. And I feel with the horror conventions versus glad I'm like small Comic Con conventions as well. Have a good times at both. Don't get me wrong, but I feel with the horror convention, everybody who's at a horror convention actually really wants to be there. I feel like mm-hmm. with Comic Cons, whether it be the boyfriend or the girlfriend, somebody's dragged there. They're only going there because. Their significant other wants to be there because their kids want to go check something out. Other than that, not everybody really wants to be there. But I feel like with a horror convention, everybody there really wants to be there. You can kind of feel with the yes. energy that's there. You can tell how people are communicating, and it's just, it's awesome. It's really mm-hmm. cool, and it's really fun, and shit. With this podcast, I never thought I'd be able to talk to some of the people I got to talk to, meet the people I got to meet just through shooting an email or networking into DMs. Not sliding. <laughs> <laughs> and just, and I've gotten, I, like, I've gotten more yeses to come on the show than no's. And I'm at the, like, I'm at the point now, I'm not big by any means, but I'm at the point now, like, the more I grow, the ones that said no, for whatever reason, that's fine. I don't care. I'm not mad about it. I would let them come on the show, but all the ones I've said yes before, I would let them come on again before I let all these no's come on. Like, say, so, you know. Somebody wants to come on because I make made a name for myself, so to speak. Now they want to come. I'm like, well, you, you got to wait in the back of the line. Because all these people that said yes since day one, they're always going to be number one. The door is always open for them. Yeah. But I'm, again, like I said, that doesn't mean they can't come on. It just means you made me wait. Now you got to take a back seat to people who actually wanted to come on here and just have a good time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's so freaking fun. Yeah. You know, it, you, you know, to get back to an earlier question, you had asked me um, if uh, I had thought about any other har- – cosplay characters and um your girl Felissa rose was oh. going to be at nj Harcon that was just canceled and i had i i a uh, couple months ago um i had irene watch sleepaway camp for the first time she's never seen it didn't know about the ending okay. you know <laughs> so you know that me, ending blew my mind <laughs> yes um i always like to embarrass her whenever we're out in public like when we go on cruises like i'll do any thing they do like the world's sexiest man competition you know <laughs> i'm all about taking all my clothes off and getting women's clothes hey got gold medal twice um yeah. <laughs> but i was thinking what better way to meet her for the first time and cosplay as one of the, like the male counselors with like the shorty short jean jorts mm-hmm. and like the midriff shirt, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, so maybe, um, I don't know. She was, was there, they rescheduled NJ Harakon for um, June, but you know, with the current state, I don't know if that's going to get canceled now. Yeah. You know? But I would love to have her come you know because she had to my knowledge i don't think she's done monster mania if she has it's been years and mm-hmm. she hasn't done nj harkman i know she's more like up your way a lot yeah like, that oh there. my gosh once you meet her man you're, you're gonna see why i love her so much because she's just it's not just the looks but she's just such a real sweet genuine person she's so nice she'll talk your ear off and like her hugs are free <laughs> yeah. so, Marissa, who I love is, celebrities like that. Who, um, since you've been going to conventions, who's like your favorite celebrity you got to meet? Like that really gave you like that wow. Um, let me see. I met James Jude Courtney in March last year, and he was so freaking nice. Mm-hmm. Like he actually like went as he was signing like my, um his autograph. He like was talking to me for a few minutes and like was asking me about my day and like it's just like little things like that yeah like, that like the celebrities do that interacting with the fans instead of just like oh let me sign this okay take a picture all right like send you off on your way yeah. i like when they actually like st- like you know conversate with you i thought that was really sweet yeah and i also yeah. met nev campbell um Ooh. 
Nice. Where, where was it? Steel, uh, Steel City Con up in Pittsburgh. And she was awesome too. She was so nice and down to earth. And she was like my first scream queen. So I was like fangirling like, <laughs> super hard. So I was actually looking into Steel City. Do they have that once a year or is it twice a year? It's twice a year. Okay. It's in April and then December. Okay, I guess, uh, I mean, Pittsburgh is, I, I'm, I, I would have to map it out, but I was thinking about maybe next year going to Steel City, you know, and kind of branching out of the New Jersey and trying a different I, convention. I have to do the same, man. My wife tells me all the time, she's like, we go to, you go to Scarecon every, you got to start branching out. So before this whole crisis was going on, we were planning on getting tickets actually this month, I believe, to go out to Colorado in September. My brother, oh, wow. my brother's out in Colorado, and his birthday weekend there's a con. I forgot what the heck it's called, but it's the first horror con they're having out there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Over by, and it's like five minutes from his house, and we're gonna go out there, have a great time, and just I don't know what's gonna happen now. I don't know if the con's gonna get canceled, and you know, so you got to kind of wait on that. But I was just like, damn, that would have been so great. And obviously, networking way out there. I wouldn't bring my podcast out there just because I don't want to bring all my equipment on a plane. Mm-hmm. But I bring business cards and then just, you know, see what I can see what connections I can make. But I do want to start going to some more stuff around here. Like we were another thing we were planning on doing is going to Blairstown mm. for the fortieth anniversary. Yeah. Um yeah. with the current situation. But it's not sure what's going on. Um I haven't talked to Jeanette recently. I do know that the uh the tours at the lake, if they get canceled for the 40th, they are going to reschedule it for September. So, um, which, you know, it sucks on so many levels because one, the 40th anniversary is already going to be gone. It's not going to yeah. have the same feeling. But hey, today's the 35th anniversary of Friday Part 5. Woo. Yes, and we're uh, doing that Friday. Yay. Not forget. <laughs> Yes, Wait. it's Friday. We're reviewing Friday and part I, five. I'll have the, I'll have the red jumpsuit on the re, the bright red jumpsuit on. Do not worry. All right, awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I I the one of our previous uh, episodes we recorded. I had told uh, Sir that he should. I uh, guess he was going to his horror convention because um, he had a table there to cosplay as Reggie the Reckless from part five. So, and I even sent him a, <laughs> um, I even sent him a, a, a pin that I had made that said reckless on there with a red cool. hoodie. Yes. I love that. <laughs> um, so awesome. as of right now, the plans for Blairstown is still on, but, uh, you know, it's up in the air with the current yeah. situation. And, Understandable. Yeah. Um, so if they are going on, I'm going up. Irene and I are going up that Thursday night, which would be the seventh. Um, the actual anniversary is that Saturday, the ninth. So, um, but if it gets rescheduled in September, I'll be going there in September. And then there's another Friday, the 13th in November. So, um, and I'm looking forward. I'm hoping, I don't know if you were aware, uh, sir. Um, I did a toys for tots drive with the Blair sound museum for Christmas right. last year. And I partnered with my friends who are in a toy store and uh, I brought with me like over a hundred toys. And I think collectively between the museum and the armory, we don't, we got 2000 toys donated, um, which is really cool because um, the uh, Blairstown, I guess there was a Friday the 13th this past December. And so they mm-hmm. had a, Friday the thirteenth tree lighting ceremony, which is really cool. And uh so myself mm-hmm. and Matt Keller, who was also on your show with Jeanette a while yeah. ago, we lit the Christmas tree together. That's awesome. So um yeah. and because of the turnout, because once the holidays hit in Blairstown, <clears throat> it's quiet from like December to like March. But with the turnout Jeanette had, she was thinking of just having a annual holiday party, whether it's Friday the thirteenth or not, which would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, Mm-hmm. So I'm looking to do that again with uh, Farpoint Toys and Collectibles partnering up with them again this year. You know, hopefully uh, because you know everything shut down and who knows what's going on. Because who knows they might cancel the conventions for the rest of the year. You know, uh, makes me so sad. It it does it does because I just want this to be over already. I know, I know. <laughs> but um. Because I was supposed to meet the, the Gallo crew for the first time. I've already met Joe last year, but mm-hmm. all of us were going to get together for Monster Mania. 
Um, and then they were all bummed out that, you know, it was canceled. We were like crying together through Facebook <laughs> messenger. Uh, so that's when like I made the decision, well, I'm going to go to Blairstown if you guys want to come, but then they decided, you know, they have families. Yeah. Uh, they're going to stay there. Um, so, but the plan is that they're coming to Blairstown in May. If all goes down, uh, if all goes well. And, um, Emily Lane, who is Lady Voorhees, and she also does uh, some of the, the photography as well. Mm-hmm. She is mm-hmm. going to be, I, that's my talk with them, cosplaying as a character from Jason X. So we'll, we'll see if that happens. Mm-hmm. But if May doesn't happen, I'll see them maybe in September or November. But I am going to be up your way in August because Irene and I were thinking about going to Canada um, in the end of August. But, you know, if they open the borders by then, um, you know, but I'm still going up to New York to see Joe because we're actually going to do an official photo shoot together. What part of, what part of New York? Mm-hmm. I always forget where he's from. Give me one second and I'll tell you. Was um, he from like upstate New York? He is. He's like three hours from the border, I think, from Canada. Um, oh, so he's probably in the Rochester area. Let's see. Rochester or Buffalo area. He's not Buffalo. Not Buffalo. Uh, Scipio. Scipio. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. It's probably, it's probably closer to Rochester, maybe closer to... It's further up north, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, think, heard of it. I think he's like around like the Albany. I think Albany, maybe. Like yeah, That's that where area. I am. I'm in oh. Albany. Hmm. Okay, maybe well, not then. <laughs> Technically Schenectady, but Albany's like twenty minutes. Hold 20 on, minutes. let me let me look, pull up the map here on Trusty like Scipio. State. I'm not sure. It could. I mean, it could be like an hour away. I just never heard of it. <clears throat> Let's see. By the way, Marissa, I love that Camp Crystal Lake shirt. That's freaking awesome. Thank you. This is the shirt I wore in the Bobby photo shoot. <laughs> I have a bunch yeah. of these in like a ton of colors. <laughs> so figured I'd uh, rep it tonight. Rep Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to be a camp counselor. Like I was actually a camp, but counselor. not get killed. <laughs> as, as a cosplayer or in a movie or both. Oh my god, I would love to be like in a fan film or something. That would be that would be a dream. I mean, a movie is like a you know a stretch, but <laughs> I would love to be in a fan <clears throat> film. A fan film is definitely very possible. There's a lot that go on, and they just. Sometimes they just want extras just standing in the background. Sometimes they the, want to the problem there. with the fan films just right now is there's too many. It's like Disney and Marvel. They're throwing us a Star Wars and a, Mar- like a Marvel film like so much. Um, I am behind. Yeah. A f- I am behind a few, but uh, you know there was a tra- like a teaser that was released maybe a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. And all they did was just do audio from the characters. And until I see video, I'm just like, uh uh-uh. you know, not for me. Uh, and I'm always behind the Friday okay. films and the fan yeah. films, you know, but uh, I don't know. Like I'm excited for, as you know, his name was Jason. My friend Dave oh, Brown's yeah. working on that, but he's got the Friday curse. I mean, the poor guy. He's been having, you know, trouble with the crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. He was all set to shoot some scenes at Hunter's Lodge, where actually the cast and crew from the original stayed at during the filming of the original movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pushed back now because he's got like three scenes left: Hunter's Lodge, the uh, campground scene, and the Blairstown Diner scene. Um, of course, there's never a hike in the snow, which I'm excited yes. for. I'm a backer of yep. that. And then Jason Rising. Yeah. Have you have you seen the Jason Rising trailer, Marissa? Or the uh, that's the I have the four yeah, and a half. I follow them. I think they follow me back on Instagram. And did you see? Yeah, the, it looks awesome. Did you see the four and a half minute scene they released on the thirteenth? I keep forgetting to watch it. You just told me about that this past. No, I didn't see that yet. Oh my gosh! Go to just type. See, in, I'm behind too. Just type in Jason <laughs> Rising on YouTube after the show, and it's <laughs> it's. I think I, I was I supposed, to send, it, I was supposed to send it to you and Thad, and I completely forgot. Oh man, you were. Uh, um, and then you have Fall Camp Blood, which is coming out in June. Um, one just came out mm-hmm. like on the 13th, called Camp Forest Green. <sighs> Um, which I haven't watched yet. There's just like so many. It's just like, you know, I, I want to keep... It's a lot, yeah. It's a lot, <laughs> and, you know, um, I want to 
you know, I want to, um, you know, help and share this stuff, but it's like, slow down a little bit because people are going to start getting tired. See, you know? I, I, I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, I just look at it as it's just, <clears throat> it is a good time to do it because you have so many different op. Let's just use Friday the 13th. For example, you have so many different options. Like, okay, these five fan films of Friday the 13th came out. Let me see which one's my favorite or whatever the case may be. And I mean, Hollywood puts out movies damn near every day. And these guys, I think they're just trying to do what they want to do. You know, get their ideas out there, get their dreams out there. But I do get what you're saying. I just think because there's so many people that can do it now, though. It's not like, say, five, six years ago, only, I know I'm just throwing on a random number, say only 20 people can do it. Now it's like a thousand people can do it. And five years from now, a million people will be able to do it for just from sitting at home. Technology gets better. Like, from your damn phone, people can mm-hmm. make it, which I think is awesome. Yeah, but I, I get. Did you guys see the uh, Michael versus Jason fan film? I think it was called Evil versus Evil or something. Yeah, I yeah, didn't watch I it did. all the way through. Like I watched like different parts of it, and it was good. I liked it. I um, loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I was so into it. They're supposed. They're supposed to be a second part to that. Even I know, I'm waiting that, for um, it. <laughs> even the one that Vince DeSanti did, I forget the name of it offhand. Um, it was like a short 20 minute. Um, he, What's I, I'll have, I forget the name offhand. Um, it came out a few months ago. Okay. Um, I don't know if Womp Stomp Films was behind it, but I know he played Michael Myers, and it was a very good psychological thriller. You know, the endings that there's a twist ending. And I was like, whoa. Um, I'll have to shoot you. I'll I'll look it up and I'll shoot you both the um the link. I know I've seen a Halloween one, Spirit of Haddonfield. Did you see that one? Was that the one? Let me just type that. that in. Let me That's good. That That's only like twenty minutes. It looks. Is it is it about a, really a girl walking home? Yes, and you yes. see. Yes, yes. She calls yeah. her grandmother on the phone. Or was it? Her I, yeah, and did it did it have like a twist ending at the end? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yep. Vince DeSanti was uh, he was a consultant on that. Um, and he played Michael Myers. So, um, it was really good. Yeah, that was awesome. That yeah. Was awesome. I actually did a, um, my cousin and I did Halloween, the original Halloween podcast. We did a podcast on that, but we spoke on Spirit of Haddonfield before we got into that mm-hmm. for a few minutes. And that, but that was, yeah, that was freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like the one thing, like, I don't see a lot, like, uh, a lot of, like, I don't, or I don't maybe hear about it because I'm not on a lot of, uh, like Michael Myers or Freddie pages, but, uh, I know there's been some Freddie fan films. Um, I haven't seen any yet. I, I want to, I know some are, are they, are they good? <laughs> I hear there is one that is really good and it's kind of like a, um, Oh, what was it? I? I'll have to find. I'll have to get the name and I'll send it to you. But I think it was like before he got burned and stuff. You know, it's kind of like a backstory. Hmm. Um, and then I'm I'm sure you might have heard this, Marissa. They're doing a Freddy versus Jason fan film. Have you mm-hmm. heard about this? Yep. I've heard about it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who's going to be in it though. Uh, well, Cody Huskins. If you've heard of Cody Huskins, he is. Oh yeah, yeah, I follow he's, him. He's he's playing Jason, and then the guy playing Freddy. I think he's been in some previous like fan films, but not the ones that I'm referencing to. And mm-hmm. it takes place in the Jason Goes to Hell universe. So they haven't released. See anything. that I would watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't released really a synops or anything. It's called, I think it's called like Dreamscape or something. Because uh, they got Creighton Duke in there. Um, and I said, I gave the, the baby the wrong name. It's not baby Jessica, it's baby Stephanie. So the, the baby's going to be older in this one. But so I'm thinking there has to be maybe flashbacks because, well, as we all know, Creighton Duke died. But. Mm-hmm. And that's like the one thing, and I told this to Thad and, and Sir, I always wanted that backstory of who was Creighton Duke. You know, they, mm-hmm. he was this pretty cool character and they didn't really give him a backstory. But in my mind, it's Reggie the Reckless. Uh, <laughs> Reggie the Reckless. <laughs> Reggie the Reckless. Yeah. So, um, so Marissa, do you have anyone that you want to give a shout out to as far as like, uh, uh, mm. like you, you shouted out your photographer. Um, if you want to give another yeah. shout out. Mm. Uh, Lisa, who photographed me and Bobby, and she also photographed me and Scott, too, this past summer. So um, oh. shout out to her. She's awesome. 
Uh, I was supposed to do another photo shoot with her today, but uh, she's feeling under the weather. Hopefully it's not anything <laughs> serious. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I was getting kind of worried. <laughs> and also, it was, like, really windy today, so yeah. we canceled that. But, yeah, shout out to our two photographers that we worked with. And let me see them. Yeah. Should I shout out like cosplayers or? <laughs> yeah, do you have any cosplayers shout that you want to shout? Oh out? yeah, anybody you want to shout, shout out? Shout out to Bobby, you're awesome. Thanks for being like the first Jason I ever worked with. So. <laughs> now does he get does he get in character like when he's killing you? Does he like, um, maybe put use too much strength? Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He stays in character. Yeah. That's like the one thing, like um. Uh, I did my first photo shoot, my new costume with uh, the two girls um, on Instagram, uh, Miss Meow Michelle and Rebecca Sin, they're pinup models. And it was a fun photo shoot, but it was, I, I, I had a different uh, frame of mind because I wanted to kind of roll reverse and empower the women. So it's like they're, they're hiking <coughs> in the woods Ooh. and... Um, it was uh, uh, Heather is her well, the one girl's name. She brought her son Enzo, and it was his 18th birthday. So she's like, "Can you kill him on screen?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. You know, I'll break his neck. It's all right, you know." And so he he had a real he had a really fun time. Um, so basically, it was like me me stalking them in the woods, and you know, at first they're scared and they're running away, and then they find a cabin, and then I kind of changed it up a little bit because with the cabin scene, I had two things in mind like i wanted them to overpower me but then i also wanted to do the the reading like a, a old monster magazine with jason uh on the cover and like i'm in the background so it's like it's come to life you know mm -hmm. so that was like some of the photos i did nice. and um it was fun because they're they have been doing modeling for a while now so they they know how to work the camera and how to really get into it you know Mm -hmm. which made it so much mm -hmm. easier and more fun too um because they were very relaxed and so i wanted to basically shine the girl power on them and not have one final girl but two final girls so um basically and the that's whole, awesome the whole moral was you know, like uh beauty killed the beast you know yeah so, I like that. so girl, like power. The girl power um so <laughs> my favorite shot is where I'm on my knees and Rebecca's like takes my chain and she's choking me. I'm going like this. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Miss Mia Michelle has the machete and, you know, and then she has like my hockey mask. And then my buddy, Mark, who was the photographer, he photoshopped like the actual, uh, uh, Jason face from the new blood onto me, <laughs> you know, which is cool. Um, but you could tell it was like, you could tell it was an edit, but it was still a cool shot anyway. But then my photographer who I'm now partnering with Jennifer James of James photography and imaging, I sent her the photo because with, when I have just my under mask on, um, you can see my skin tone in some spots. So she, um, just, did her magic and shaded them in. So you see my original mask and it, it looks better, you know, but I still mm -hmm. like the new blood is my favorite as far as how Jason does look. And that when his mask ripped off in part seven, oh, and saw his face, like that was just awesome. So, went, dis so disturbing. <laughs> went from that to looking like a, a reject from the Muppets in part eight though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> A reject from the Muppets is what you said about Jason. If you look at his, oh, come on now. If you look at Manhattan, when actor, um, uh, what's her name? Reagan, I think her name is, throws the, the thing of acid on him or what a toxic sludge. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. looked like a Muppet. Like <laughs> it was, it was, <clears throat> it was, it was rough. I'm not even going to lie to you. It was rough. Yeah. And they, they painted New York in a very bad way too. Like they dumped the sewage, toxic sewage every night at midnight or whatever. Like, <laughs> and you know, yeah. like Irene and I usually go to New York city once a year during the holidays and I'm walking times square. I'm like, Oh, that's where Jason came out of the subway, you know, the exit. <laughs> yeah. So they couldn't even get that right. They couldn't just film right next to an actual subway exit. They had to put one in times square to 
it's just a vent. So that's just they, what they should have done is just left it at camp. Jason does not need to go to Manhattan. There's no business there. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was different. <laughs> yeah, it was different. And, uh, I mean, like I said, like we talked about this on Friday. That teaser trailer to promote it was great. You know, yeah, Frank Sinatra music. <laughs> on top of a building. The woman comes out. Johnny? And then Jason turns around. You know, and then mm-hmm. then we get him on Arsenio Hall. That was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I watched that recently. I I love how he stayed in character. Oh, it was the whole interview. That was just so yeah, cool. yeah. But you know, here's the thing. Now, now, Marissa, like, what are, what are your thoughts of like? Okay, of course, in, like in the late '80s, Jason and Freddie, like, uh, were all over the media, MTV, whatever. Mm-hmm. Freddie mm-hmm. was badass in part one, two, and three, and then four, and mm-hmm. five, and six. It was very comical. So, what are your yeah? On that? Are are those like? Um, actually, of- I only like parts one, two, and three. I mean, part one's like my favorite. Nothing will beat the original, and I I thought he was the creepiest in the first one. I actually prefer him like more. Like he still had those like witty like one liners and but for the most part he was creepy in the original. I yeah. didn't like that they made him like comical after yes. a while. Especially I don't like, know, kinda like turned into a joke. Yeah, he <laughs> like, really jumped a shark and Freddy's dead. Or no, no, um not Fred well Freddy's dead, but even in part what was it, five yeah, the dream child when he was like super Freddy. You know? <laughs> yeah, it started getting a little ridiculous. So I was like, mm, now, um, <laughs> were, you, were you a fan of the remake with Jackie Earl Haley? I, I liked the remake, yeah. Everyone gives me shit for saying that. But, I mean, I just try to, like, view it as, like, its own movie. And I try not to compare it so much to the original. I mean, you're going to compare it to the mm-hmm. original. Exactly. Like, like, I mean, Robert <laughs> England's, like, a god he's nothing like no one he is freddy but yeah i thought jackie earl haley did a great job i don't know robert england, did good. robert england is to freddy like christopher reeve is the superman you know it's mm-hmm. gonna be very big um gloves to fill if you will i like jackie earl haley's performance but i think under all that pressure he did a good job I mean, oh most definitely yeah i mean i mean you know there's always been talks of kevin bacon you know, people Same would way. love to see Kevin Bacon. Which yeah, didn't Robert England say that or something? Yes, like he, he, yeah. he did, and that's what, how it started. Now, do you watch the Goldbergs, Marissa? Wasn't he on the episode of that? Right, he, he was, was last year. I didn't yeah. watch that show, but I think <laughs> yeah. I watched. I think I watched the clip of that or the episode of that. I don't remember. That but is, I don't watch that show, but that that, that was, is a great show. Especially, I grew up in that era. You know, so yeah. everything mm-hmm. that they talk about, I I just remember so fondly. And when they brought him back, now mind you, the makeup was more like later Freddie makeup. It was still funny. Mm-hmm. He still has it for being in his seventies. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, and you're aware that they're making a uh, fan film as a follow up to uh, New Nightmare, Marissa, correct? Really? I did not know that actually. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this on Friday with um um Dad, so you can't even remember his name. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of um <laughs> the char- Miko Hughes' name in, in New Nightmare. I can't his name is escaping me right now. Oh but, um, okay. there is a fan film. Um I can't think of the name right now that's in production and it's a sequel to New Nightmare and it takes it centers on the little boy from New Nightmare. Miko Hughes is coming back to reprise his character and Ooh. the trailer um, is narrated by the guy playing Freddy and you see uh, Miko Hughes sleeping and by his bedside is Rex still with like the Freddy uh, <laughs> claws in it. Um <laughs> So I do know that Jason Brooks from like Friday Thirteen Vengeance is going to be in it. His he's reprising his character of Louis Carlyle, the town drunk. Um, which if you saw Vengeance, his that character was great. Like uh, <laughs> when I reached, I I, I I met Jason Brooks at Jason Fest, and he's a really nice guy. He is tall, taller than C.J. Graham, and um, wow. another cool guy to talk with. And we've you know. 
we're friends on Facebook and he's, uh, he's been cool. Like he's helped me like plug an event I did and he donated some prints for a uh, fundraiser I was doing for an animal shelter. Um, but when he plugged me for this, I had an event back in October where I was a featured guest. Mm. He plugged me in his Louis Carlisle. He was still in makeup. So he plugged me as Louis Carlisle and it was like the best like 20 seconds ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I oh, mean, that's now I want to watch all these damn fan films. You got to send me, you have to send us these links. Oh, well, for yeah, me too. You, well, you, for, you, you, <laughs> you forget for Friday the 13th related fan films. You can uh, go to my website, stop and I do have a link to, uh, and it goes back as far as Never Hike Alone to current. So um, you, I give you the direct link to Never Hike Alone and Vengeance where you can watch them now. And then you have a trailer mm -hmm. for, his name was Jason, Jason Rising, and Camp Blood. But as far as the other stuff, the Friday stuff, I will send it to you before I go to bed tonight, both of you. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, where, yeah, I'm on your site now. Where's, the, where's these links at? Um, if you go to my tab, um, there should be a tab for like fan films. If you get the menu button. Ah, got it. See it now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out too. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm, I always I, appreciate a good fan film. <laughs> yeah. I I, yeah. Um, like, I'm, I'm excited to see the, like we talked about on Friday, the, the Charles. Um, that looks so freaking good. Yeah. Yeah. That looks right. amazing. Do you like uh, Charles Play, Marissa? Yes, I do. There is a fan film. Com there's a fan film coming out called Charles. It looks so. amazing. Yeah. What? You gotta send yeah. me that too. <laughs> yep. I haven't um, seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. It's, it ha is there a release date for that? I believe October. Okay. okay. Did you guys like the remake? I. I we talked about this first. on Friday. You go. Yes. Look, I loved it. You yeah. Look, you look like you didn't like it, but I'll tell you why I loved it. <laughs> Just because I look at it like as far as how they went with it, I think it was more of trying to get younger people into it and yeah. devices we use, as we mentioned earlier, cell phones and all this stuff. Everything You can do everything from your cell phone. You can damn near start your car from your cell phone nowadays. So I like how they use all those elements with, you know, the Chucky doll that was not possessed. The guy that, the malfunctioning Chucky doll, whatever, whatever he did to it to make it do whatever. Turn yeah. the safety off. That's what he did. So I, I love that aspect of it. And I just thought it was real cool, real fun. And I know that they couldn't use a lot of stuff from the original Chucky. Or Child's Play, I should say. All they can use is like the name. They couldn't use any similar kills. Any, if they used anything from it besides, you know, again, the names, they can get sued for it. Sued, so they couldn't really, they had their hands tied. So what, knowing that, I'm like, okay, they did a really good job. I did go there with low expectations. Like, oh man, it's going to be tough to watch. Because when you first see the trailer, when you first see pictures of it, the look, I was like, son of a bitch. This is, this, that's not Chucky. <laughs> it's not Chucky. But yeah. I will say, watching the movie, the look of it, like when you watch the movie, the look fits the character of Chucky, if that makes sense. You know, for the, mm -hmm. when you watch that actual movie, it fits. It worked. So I, I loved it. But now I want to know why you didn't like it. <laughs> or why you, did you hate it? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I liked it. Oh. I did. I liked it. Yeah. But I thought it was, um, no, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> I try not to hate on the remakes. I, I did like that. They made it more like technology, mm -hmm. like it, more relatable, like to today's generation. See, this yeah. is the only thing I didn't like about it. It was a disgruntled employee. It wasn't like a virus or something. It was just like this disgruntled employee that put a code in there. Um, but yeah, I went in it with caution because that's the first horror movie I remember watching with my stepdad, who was like mm -hmm. a, a father to me more than my biological. And I remember watching it like on HBO, and it was like I was God. I was probably like Andy's age watching it, probably like eight. And um, it, that creeped me out too, but not to the extent of Exorcist. Um, and I like part two. I don't like part three. I didn't like Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky. Yeah. And I, 
I got to go back and rewatch the two newest ones that were directed DVD. Oh, Colton. Um, um, what was the other one? Um, Colton something. Yeah. Um, so I went into it with caution, and then my friend um, Kyle, who is a volunteer at the museum, he saw it like over 13 times. I'm like, damn, this must be good. So when I watched it on a streaming site, he said, tell me what you think. I said, all right. And I had to say, I was impressed with it. I liked the fact that they gave Chucky emotion. Because mm-hmm. really, the basis was Chucky just wanted to be Andy's friend. And it's all he wanted more than anything. And he thought by doing the bad things to the people that kind of hurt him, that would make Andy want to be his friend. And when he tried to kill the cat the first time, and Andy's like scolding him for it, and Chucky gets really upset. Yeah. I felt bad for Chucky, you know? I felt bad for him. <laughs> and for Mark Hamill to voice him. Oh, he's so great. Like, that came out of left field because I, never in a million years would I think Mark Hamill would voice a killer doll. But, I know. I remember when they announced that, I was like, what? Yeah, because oh, I mean. so happy about that. He's, yeah. He's my yeah. favorite. Like, I know this isn't horror related, but. As far as like the Batman movies, the Batman series, my favorite Batman is the cartoon Batman. My favorite Joker is Mark Hamill's Joker. Like it, mm-hmm. it was perfect. His voice is perfect. Yeah. It's so crazy and evil and just he's so great. And so when they told me that, when I heard about that, I was like, "This is gonna be great." I don't even care. <laughs> this is gonna so, be great. Um, yeah. Marissa. If you want to follow Kyle on Instagram, his handle is American Original. I'll send you his handle, but. He there's a Facebook group or not even a group, it's just like a page that he's a part of, and they do auctions from mm-hmm. movies and TV shows. And he started winning these auctions, and he has like just about every prop from the damn movie. Oh, like he wow, he has like the severed leg. <laughs> when oh, he's, he's, what? Right. he's got the drill, he's got Andy's cell phone, and when he turned it on. The, the actor who played Andy was taking behind the scene videos on the, on the, on the phone. So he had all this mm-hmm. stuff. He has like the clothing that Andy wore, the clothing from the toy store. Like his man cave is like what every man cave should be. It's like a museum of like the child. That is so cool. Movie. Yeah. It's really cool. Kyle's a great dude. Wow. And he, wow. he actually has, um, I was telling Aaron at that on Friday, he won in an auction, the Bronco that James Drew Courtney drove in the 2018 Halloween that he, when he kills like the dad and his son, Mm -hmm. he got that in an auction. Mm -hmm. And I know it has James Drew Courtney's autograph in there. And I think it has Jamie Lee Curtis's as well. So that's That's my girl, Jamie. Yeah. You know, and I love Jamie, like from the first movie I remember seeing her in is Halloween. And like I've mm-hmm. watched her throughout her career and you know like to get her back in H2O was a big thing and then I don't know how they got her to sign on for resurrection but when <laughs> she when she came back as Laurie sure, Strode <laughs> for the 2018 she was just I mean they they one they made her look haggard looking you know yeah. uh, mm-hmm. but she just was so great in that role oh yeah like just like phenomenal the, man this she's she and i like the fact that they they took the brother aspect out of it mm-hmm. it was just she was at the wrong place at the wrong time you know so and you like that storyline better that they're when them not being related for this universe yeah i mean i still like the whole brother sister thing like the original saga will always be in my heart because that's what we all grew up on Mm-hmm. But I do yeah. like the way they, they took it to this different, like, avenue. The only mm-hmm. complaint mm-hmm. I had in the movie, the only complaint was the doctor. I didn't like the doctor. Sh- oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> doctor Sartain. It was liked, so bizarre. <laughs> I liked him as the, the new Loomis, okay, because they always need, like, a doctor for Michael. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't <clears throat> like the fact that, like, the whole he unleashed Michael and then he puts the mask on. Oh yeah. That, that was that, the only <clears throat> part I didn't like. I'm actually, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. That was my only issue with that. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that kind of threw me off. I uh, am excited for Halloween. What's it? Halloween Kills. I guess comes out this October. Uh, hopefully, because <laughs> yeah, all the hopefully. movies are getting pushed back. <laughs> you know, although I did read that Wonder Woman eighty four, they're going to put on video on demand most likely if you know the movie theaters aren't open. So, because I'm excited mm-hmm. for Wonder Woman eighty four. Um, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> this was a fun, fun time, guys. Yeah, yes, definitely. This is awesome. I was so nervous. Like I was telling, <laughs> I was telling you. I was like, oh my god, I'm so nervous. Like, this is my first podcast I've ever been on. So I was like super scared. But you like reassured me, you're like, it's gonna be fine. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we just goof off and Yeah, it's yeah, I feel this, I feel super comfortable now. <laughs> I'm I'm happy you said that. I'm I'm being honest with you. This is how every episode goes. Usually a lot more immature, swearing and all that kind of crazy stuff. But other than that, and I've had so many people come on here and say, I've never been on a podcast, interviews, all this stuff. They're so nervous. So that's why I usually, well, actually every episode I try to talk to the people beforehand, before I start recording, let them be a little comfortable. And within the first five minutes of recording, usually people are just good. They're just, they're fine. Like it's, it's real easy, real laid back. Cause I don't want to make it like a quote unquote professional interview or just putting you on the spotlight. I mean, that's, that's too much. And I know. I hate it's that. Too much work, <laughs> I I feel like it's, it's too much work for both of us. And you're not really getting the right energy from the person. Like you're, you're putting them just. It's, it's, it's almost like a job interview. You know, you have your first job interview at that younger ages and you're kind of nervous. Like, I don't want to put you on the spot like that. Yeah. Like, Shit, I got to answer this right. Fuck. Bam. Yes. Yeah. That's, I overanalyze everything I say, so I'm glad it wasn't like that. I just try to have it as a few friends sitting down. If they drink alcohol, having some beers. If they don't, drinking some iced tea and enjoying the conversation that goes on. Yeah, this is super chill. I loved it. <laughs> well, hopefully I can get you back on again for a movie review or something. And what yes, I, I would love that. Not only that, which oh, we could possibly say, I don't, I'll, well, I'll talk to you guys after this, after we record. I'll stop recording and talk a little bit more. But I was going to say, um, also, when you, you know, when you have something big coming up with cosplaying, come back on again. As I tell him all the time, come back on, let us know, promote it and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Have some more actually fun. um i do have something i can i can plug in it's actually kind of funny uh so james um emerald who does slasher uh dot graphics uh he's a really cool guy and um he has uh shirts that he makes called final girls and they're they're crop tops so Uh-oh. um how did the challenge start i don't remember exactly how but the I think he actually challenged the guys over at Camp Blood Radio to to wear them, and they they said <laughs> no. But I took it one step further, as I always do, and so I challenged not only Nathan and and Kent, the host of Camp Blood Radio, but Joe Gallo as well. And because Joe was um, using his models to wear the crop tops, mm-hmm. but I said I want to do a role reversal. I want the guys to wear the crop tops. Okay, so what we're going to do is now there's an inside joke on Camp Blood Radio about Dollar General and how we love Dollar General. So we were thinking of doing the photos in front of there, but I have a different idea what I want to do. And um, so I said, Joe, why don't we get you and I versus you and I and um, we're going to do a fundraiser because James wanted to do a fundraiser out of it originally for the um, the the, uh, the tornado victims in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um but there was just some timing issues where we just couldn't do it. And Joe is being a diva and wants to wait till it's warmer. So um, <laughs> basically what we're going to do is a cosplayer versus cosplayer with like two models with us. But it's going to be role reversal and we're going to wear the crop tops. And the girls will wear like our hockey mask. And they're going to, oh, cool. you know. So um, I haven't talked to James, but I think Joe and I, what we're going to do is the fundraiser will be towards the the coronavirus you know like a fund for something like that so um hopefully we can do that within you know the next month as it gets warmer so diva joe you know won't be you know cold outside but (laughs) but i'll have a um i have a really good um picture in my head of how i want to do it and i just got to borrow a pair of irene shorts so (laughs) (laughs) this is interesting that sounds like a fun time i definitely see this 
Oh, it's going to be great. Posting it all over the place, though. Oh, I'm going to put it all over the place. <laughs> Show some skin. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess we could wrap it up. Any other show plugs you guys want to do, go right ahead. Plug everything, your pages, where people can find you. Okay. What you have um, coming up, if anything. I know the corona thing is screwing that up. But, yeah, let them know where we can find you. So, Marissa, since you're the guest, if you want to plug your Instagram and anyone else. Which people? Yes. He is right up here. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Right there. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Underscore. It's wrist. Uh, that's the only social media account I have right now. I'll, I will be making a Facebook in the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> but all my stuff is on Instagram. So Awesome. All right. Uh, and I will be at Monster Mania in August, hopefully. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, hopefully in August. Yeah. Did you really lose Marissa? The, her camera just turned off, but she's still here with us. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll plug us uh, so on my website again. is SouthJerseyJason.com. Uh, if you would like to be a cosplayer featured, uh, just send me an email at SouthJerseyJason at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at SouthJerseyJason. And then I want to give the shout-outs to uh, – uh, Gallo goes to hell on Facebook and then on Instagram he's 13 Gallows Lane and then uh, my guys over at Camp Blood Radio Nathan and Kent and I definitely want to give a huge shout out to uh, James Ingram from J3 Jason Costumes he nice. is the designer of my costume and uh, he is now my official sponsor so uh, we have two more costumes that we're working on um, for this year one of them being a He's gonna. Uh, we're gonna do a uh, a part four, like a proper part four, and then one for Halloween. And I just sent him a. I sent him a, an image that I think I want to do for next year, and it's nothing like, you know, big. It's just kind of cool looking, and I'll I'll send you the image, mm -hmm. um, sir. It's pretty cool looking. Um, and then of course, uh, Jeanette Ayurado and her wonderful staff at the uh, Blairstown Museum, and then. Last but not least, my wife for putting up with you. Put up with me, <laughs> and it to get to I, what I do just to annoy her because I know it annoys her. I call her. I call myself a social media influencer, oh. so I do it because it pisses her off. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> but I will say, um, that I already know you're going to be on again. Did you? You pretty much don't have a choice. You're on next Friday, as a matter of yes. fact. Yes, we are doing. Friday the 13th, part five, which I'm not 100% sure when this episode's out because I have a bunch of stuff that's out, you know, coming out before this. But we're doing Friday the 13th, part five, which is going to be fun. Me, you, and Thad. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to all the episodes I have coming up, but that's what I'm really looking forward to just because the whole Reckless Reggie thing. Yes. I'm hey. back. Hey. Yes. Welcome Sorry, back. my phone died. Oh, it's <laughs> cool. But I, I do oh, want to... Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, technology. It, 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 it happens. <laughs> it happens. I want to, um, Sinister Parlor Podcast is another podcast I feel like you guys should check out. Not only check out, but try to get on there. I'm cool with the, I'm cool with the host of that show. And what's the name of it? I'm sorry. Sinister Parlor Podcast. Okay. She's on, it's on Facebook. She's on Instagram, on YouTube. I'll send you guys the links. Marissa, I can email you the links. I can awesome. Even send you the links to Jason, South Jersey Jason. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not, like I said, it's another podcast. Awesome podcast. She's been on my show quite a few times. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check that out. I know you guys are horror fans. Check out my. Oh, what the hell is there? Hang on. Oh, The Nightmare Shop. They are on Facebook, they are on Instagram, and they're just two guys, horror fans. They have their own little shop, they sell stuff online as well. You know the horror stuff, so you can go check them out. Anything you can, get, anything you want, pretty much they can get for the most part. And again, great guys, so definitely check them out. And then my social media plugs. I'll start with my pod, my podcast. I'm on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean's like my home network for the podcast. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook group that's for everybody and anybody to come on there, share anything and everything horror related, including plugging your own stuff. I have a Facebook page that's mainly for like the podcast, just so you guys know what's going on and all that good stuff. I share it on both, but that's just strictly for that, just so it's easy to find the news that I have updated, even if it's just me watching a horror movie. 
Mm. Um, what else do I have? Damn, I gotta start writing stuff down. I have business cards too. Uh. <laughs> oh, and I have a Twitch, a Twitch channel for those of you who are into video games, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And then my PSN, my PlayStation name is Sir underscore sturdy. And I'm usually playing every weekend some horror games and getting high and drinking and just playing whatever the hell we're playing for the night. We're gonna be playing Friday the thirteenth in a couple hours. But yeah, it's thank you guys again for coming on. This was a fun, fun freaking time. Everybody go follow blast. Go follow both of them, everybody. They're both awesome, awesome cosplayers. They're gonna be on here again. As I just said a little while ago, Brian will be on here again next Friday, definitely. He has no choice. (laughs) (laughs) It's I just oh man, this is just so fun. I think uh when you uh do your review of Freddy versus Jason, you have Marissa and her boyfriend on. I think we should Yeah, that would be so much fun. I think we should definitely, definitely make that happen. So that's yeah. I think Scott happen. should be on, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna have some Freddy's versus Jasons, and you guys are known Team Jason, but Jason. <laughs> Steam Horror at the end of the day. Oh, you know, I have one that's more right. shout out. Um, oh, go ahead. So there's another podcast that I follow. Actually, one of the hosts is outside of Philly, uh, Horror Movie Night podcast. They were supposed to be at Monster Mania. Um, they review like the B, C, D uh, camp uh, horror mm-hmm. movies. And it's a really good show. And uh, I, you know, I shoot them comments every so often and I'll message them. But Scott Roger, who he's one of the co-hosts, um, he is an amazing musician. And I actually told you that he did his own version of um, I Got Five on it. Remember on Friday I told you that? Yep. yep. So he um, designed these really cool NES um, box art. And he did one for like Chopping Mall, Sleepaway Camp, Hellraiser. Nice. Um, so I actually ordered a Sleepaway Camp from him. And nice. I asked him, hey, did you ever do customs? Um, he said, I could, but what you want? I said, if you could do one in South Jersey Jason style. So I sent him like my images, my logo, and my concept. And he, he's working on it right now. His, his, cool. his uh, fur baby just uh, passed away. So I know. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, my, again, my, my condolences to him and his wife. Oh, damn. Um, but he was actually, I talked to him about, you know, this NES box art is really cool. Like, I'll have to show you the images from the uh, sleepaway camp. Mm-hmm. But I had said to him, if you want to market this and do like a box art image from each um, parts of the movie, one one through Freddy versus Jason, let me know and you know I'll share it on my Facebook page because I think there will be fans out there that would buy it. And oh, definitely. Twenty dollars for uh, you know uh, NES box style front and back cover. So mm. yeah. yeah. Again, you have to send me these links and please don't forget. I know you're up there in age and your memory's not as good as it used to be. You gotta start writing stuff down. DMs. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ne- network. Network into the DM and send the links. That's the word we're using. Network. <laughs> and then one more shout out to um, Death Curse Designs. They uh, created um, a really cool replica of the Chris- Camp Crystal Lake uh, sign that you might have seen in. Uh, my uh, green screen photo shoots that I did. So any type of photo shoots I'm doing in the future that I can incorporate it, whether it's coming to do a green screen photo shoot with me or if I'm doing an actual photo shoot, Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. He actually has a really cool like Higgins Haven sign and he just finished a Camp Crystal Lake sign from part seven, like when they're driving to the lake. So uh, if you're looking for, you know, quality craftsmanship signs, uh, Death Curse Designs on Facebook and Instagram. Nice, nice. That's awesome. that's so freaking awesome, man. I like how you you plug so many people too. That's that's networking. Yeah, and I the feel network. like I need to write it down because I've met so many people, and I feel bad if I forget someone. You know. Yeah. So I no, gotta, I'm with you. I forget all the time. Yeah, yeah as you I see, I almost it. forgot my own stuff. <laughs> I forget so many people, and then I feel bad about it, and I'm like, please don't hate me. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> So many awesome people. Yeah. It, it, there's sometimes there's just too many yeah. to name. That would take like a whole episode. Like, okay, shout out to blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it's over with. I thought you guys were gonna review yeah. a movie. No, we had too many shout outs. <laughs> but um yeah, 
any cosplayers that want to come on here, definitely welcome. But I would say go through South Jersey Jason because that's like his his baby. And then he'll contact me and we'll make it work like how we did for this episode. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be Jason related. Um, at first, no, that's know. how I envisioned it. Um, but now as, you know, I'm getting more people interested, I am branching off. Um, so like Marissa was my first non uh, Jason per se, uh, even though she did like the Freddy versus Jason shots. But um, I, if you do any other franchise, you know, it could be Michael, it could be uh, Candyman, Pinhead, whoever, or mm-hmm. if you're an original cosplayer, uh, horror related, yeah, you know, definitely send me an email at southjerseyjason at gmail.com. And if you ever want to be a guest on this show, just talk some horror, review a movie, or whatever the case may be. Shoot me an email, horror with sir dot sturdy. Again, that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. And I want to thank my guests one more time, Marissa, Brian, aka South Jersey Jason. Thank you so much for coming on here. Have thank a great you. time. And we will definitely do this again, but we could wrap this up. Stay put though. Do not leave. I'm just gonna hit stop on the record thing. And everybody else out there, I'll see you in your nightmare.